Hi everyone, my name is Evgenia Nosek. I am a PhD student in University of Grenoble Alp, and today I'll present you how DNS queries are getting manipulated in the wild. But before we dive into the manipulation side of DNS, uh, let us first recall how it is supposed to work. Uh, let's say that uh, here on the left we have the end client uh, who wishes to resolve example.com. Uh, the client sends the query to its recursive resolver, 5678, and it is the resolver that will do all the resolution on behalf of its client. Uh, the resolver will start by contacting the DNS root server and then gradually go down to the .com TLD name server and finally to example.com name server. And here at the very end, the response 1234 is sent to the end client. Uh, as everything in DNS uh, starts uh, at the root servers, uh, those must be highly available. Uh, at the moment, we have 13 root server letters uh, that are announced as Anycast prefixes. Uh, but in reality, there are more than 1,600 Anycast instances located behind. Uh, still, not all of those instances are reachable worldwide, and some of them will only serve a limited number of clients. Uh, those are called local instances, and in BGP they are announced using no expert or no peer BGP communities. What is really important about root servers is that uh, they will never answer our queries for example.com or other second level domains. In those cases, uh, we will only receive uh, referrals to TLD name servers and corresponding Google records. So in this very small example, if we send a query for google.com directly to the K root server, uh, we will get no answer, but instead uh, simply referrals in the authority section and glue records in the additional section. However, it turned out that DNS does not always work as expected. Uh, two years ago, a meta engineer reported that uh, users from Mexico would not reach whatsapp.net. After some initial troubleshooting, it appeared that uh, even more domain names were affected. The very same problem was uh, reproduced using RIPE Atlas probes. Uh, here we have a client on the left located in Mexico uh, who is requesting the K root to resolve DNS Facebook.com. And then we see something really unexpected. First of all, a DNS root server would never answer such a query because it is not authoritative for Facebook.com. Next, uh, the returned A record is bogus, uh, and this IP address actually belongs to Twitter. And finally, the chaos class query showed that the probe breached the local instance of the care root located in China, even though there were several others nearby. Uh, so once again, here, as the instance is local, we would not expect it to leak outside the country. To elaborate a bit more on that id.server query, uh, there actually exists a set of chaos class queries that provide uh, certain info about DNS servers. Uh, the first two minion version that bind and version the server are less relevant to us because uh, they simply reveal the software versions. Uh, but the other two, hostname.bind and uh, id.server, are used by root server operators to uniquely identify running instances. Uh, if we were to avoid sending a separate query to know who is answering on the other side, uh, we would request the name server to include its NSID in the OPT resource record. And of course, the KRoot operator later confirmed that uh, root servers do not serve bogus data, and there must have been some entity in between that uh, did the injection. Now focusing on the contributions of uh, our paper, uh, we were wondering whether that was uh, just a one-time event or that KRoot instance would occasionally leak to the outside. And we can answer this question using one of the built-in RayPathos measurements. Uh, this one will periodically request all the active probes to send the id.server queries to the KRoot. Uh, and so we analyzed all the results two months before the leak and nine months after. Uh, it appeared that uh, the local instance of the k root was already reachable at least since September 2021 from 57 probes located in 15 countries. And we see that those were from all around the world. Now, even after the leak was fixed, we would still see the probes reaching the k root in China. 
And as we will show in the next slides, those probes would also receive bogus responses for Facebook.com. So we have just seen that one of the side effects of route leaks are end users traversing sensors, DNS interceptors, and other middle boxes on the way. Uh, and that's why now we would like to take uh, one step back and answer a more broad question, which is how prevalent DNS manipulation is when queries are sent to DNS root servers. And we once again refer to RIPE Atlas infrastructure to answer that question. Uh, this time we set up 312 custom measurements uh, that would be different combinations of IP protocol use, transport protocol, query type, uh, domain names, and query to servers. Uh, for our paper, we analyzed nine months of data, which included more than one billion measurements. Uh, when looking at those measurement results, uh, we divided them into two groups. The first one is non-injected, which means that the answer section was empty, and injected, which is when we got some responses. Uh, once again, we recall that uh, we were sending non-recursive queries to root servers, so we do not expect them to provide responses for second-level domain names. Uh, so as a result, uh, less than 1% of measurements experienced response injection. Uh, those responses contained 11 million different resource records, and we will now give some examples. Uh, the most common response record type was A. We got more than uh, 7 million of those. Uh, what's interesting here is that even though those responses were injected, the great majority were actually valid. Uh, so, for example, 89% of Google.com queries received correct Google IPs in responses. We see very similar trends with the uh, code responses, which were the second most popular resource record type. Uh, and here, even higher ratio of injected responses were actually valid. We then observed uh, an interesting phenomenon with some of the RIPE Atlas probes located in Iran. Uh, so when querying Facebook.com and Google.com, uh, we got URI type responses, um, but it still remains an open question as to what those actually signify. Uh, then one probe from the USA would get uh, SOA type of responses when querying Facebook.com. Uh, and here the content of the response suggests uh, that those were returned by DNS filter, which is um, a DNS filtering service. And uh, finally, we got a couple of C names, uh, which would point uh, Google.com to for safe search Google.com. Uh, this is another filtering service provided by Google, uh, which excludes explicit content from the search results. Uh, all those C names were accompanied by A records, uh, which were once again valid IPs of Google. Now, uh, to identify who actually sent us the responses, uh, we extracted NSAD strings from um, all the 1 billion measurement responses. Uh, we had more than 12,000 unique streams, uh, but uh, we managed to mask the majority of those to DNS root servers, uh, public resolvers, and filtering services. Uh, as we expected, uh, root servers do not inject bogus responses, uh, meaning that all the DNS responses with root server NSIDs had uh, empty answer sections. And uh, similarly, injected responses never came from root servers. Uh, in fact, 78% of those injectors had no identifiers, so we unfortunately could not fingerprint them. Uh, and here we plotted the ratio of probes uh, experiencing response injection to all those located in each country. Uh, we see that some countries are significantly more affected by response injection than others. Uh, for example, 97% of Iranian and 83% of Chinese probes experience response manipulation uh, when contacting DNS root servers. Uh, we further computed the ratio of probes and the measurements experiencing DNS injection and found that weekly ratios remained uh, relatively stable during the nine months of the experiment. Uh, we also found uh, on the CDF on the right that 20% uh, of manipulated probes received injected responses during uh, all the weeks of the experiment. Now, the main question is how to avoid the manipulation that we have seen so far. 
Uh, back in 2018, uh, researchers proposed to encode geographic hints in BGP announcements. And in this way, routers at the destination networks could choose uh, closely located anycast instances. Uh, going back to those users from Mexico, uh, it could avoid their queries being sent to the Chinese instance of the K route. Uh, one could also implement QNA minimization on recursive resolvers uh, so that queries to root servers do not contain any sensitive domain names. And finally, uh, the use of encryption could prevent uh, third parties from sniffing DNS traffic and DNSSEC could be used to validate all the received responders, of course, provided that domain names themselves are also signed. Uh, to summarize what we have seen, uh, DNS queries to root servers are constantly being manipulated and more than 7% of very pathless probes are affected by response injection. Now, the injected data itself is not always bogus, meaning that end users should be still able to access the requested services. And in this case, um, the manipulation would even stay completely transparent for those. Uh, what makes it more concerning is that uh, DNS manipulation may propagate beyond its intended scope and affect end users from um, all over the world. Uh, this is especially the case when coupled with BGP route leaks uh, that we have shown to stay unnoticed for several months. Uh, and finally, big thanks to all those who made this project happen. Thank you for your attention, and if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them.